So, officials of the Atlanta Hawks are huddling right now during the offseason trying to figure out what they're going to do to top this. Okay? Two words. Moses Malone. Two more words. Reggie Theus. All right. In the meantime, right now, subscribe right now to Atlanta Sports Unlimited and get the greatest sports coverage on the face of the earth of Atlanta sports teams. Tremendous analysis through these videos on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Now, back to the business at hand. I mean, this was a miracle year for these Atlanta Hawks. Tremendous year. Six games below 500, March the 1st. Nate McMillan takes over for Lloyd Pierce, and they go nuts, okay, despite having as many significant injuries as anybody in the NBA. But you know what else they had, these Hawks? They had Trey Young, this magnificent young guy. And they had all these other uh, youthful uh, folks on the roster that just made things happen. And then enough veterans sprinkled in between where they went from six games under 500 on March the 1st to two games away, two victories away from the NBA Finals. And, and as a result of this, they, they became the darlings of Atlanta and actually of the nation. Even my 85-year-old mother became a huge, huge fan of Trey Young. I got her T-shirt and everything, okay? But you know what? I mean, this wasn't the most lovable team in history of the Atlanta Hawks. No, no, no. Hey, maybe 1B. one b eh, 1A, 1B. One all right, all right. Well, what we'll just say is a toss-up between this one and, and the greatest nickname team in the history of the NBA. Maybe in the history of sports. All right. You know, back then they had Neek. They had Doc, they had Tree, they had Spud, okay? Yeah, this is back, this is why, what, I'm trying to do quick math. 34, 35, 36 years ago. Yeah, their real names, Dominique Wilkins, Doc Rivers, uh, Tree Rollins, Spud Webb. Remember that? Hey, then they had, had this guy, Kevin Willis, didn't have a nickname, but he was pretty darn good, okay? I mean, this is a pretty good team. Yeah, and, 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 and matter of fact, that team, Way back then, they were the only Hawks team, Atlanta Hawks team ever, to win 50 games or more for three straight years. It happened through the 1988 season. They won 50, then 57, then 50, and getting to that 87-88 season. I know you remember that. You've heard about this. I mean, you've seen the clips here, okay? They get into the Eastern Conference semifinals. And they're playing the great Boston Celtics. You know, the ones with Larry Bird, uh, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish. Three Hall of Famers they had in there, all right? And the Hawks took them, took them to seven games. They should have won in game six here in Atlanta, but it's another story. They took them to seven games at Boston Garden. They didn't win, <clears throat> but it was that great game seven between Larry Bird and... And Dominique Wilkins, when they just went scoring, you know, back and forth, back, it was unbelievable. So I mean, that that was that was the greatest stretch in the history of the uh, Atlanta Hawks. But you know what they did after that? Uh, after that, uh, they, being Hawks management and Hawks ownership, they went into that off season. They were they went into that off season. They said, you know what? We want to get better. All right, everybody's happy and people enthusiastic but we want to get better can't fault them for that okay so <clears throat> so what they did was they went out and they signed Moses Malone a future Hall of Famer I mean Moses Malone I mean this guy gave you uh, at least 20 points and 10 rebounds every single night for a decade or more I mean he was a horse so I said to get Moses Malone and they you know anyway I'll get it that so, so then they said, oh, we're not finished yet. Let, let's, let's get another shooting guard. So they got Reggie Theus from Sacramento. I mean, I mean Reggie Theus. Get, get, so they got him. So, so, they got, so they upgraded, in their mind, with Moses Malone and Reggie Theus. In order to do that, they said, hey, Tree, we love you and everything. Bye-bye. He's gone. Tree Rollins is out of here. I mean, the guy was only averaging like four points per game. I mean, literally, all right? Great defense, but four points per game compared to, you know, Moses Malone, I mean, future Hall of Famer, 20 point. You're out of here. So they let him walk as a free agent. He was, he was gone. 
Randy William, Randy Whitman, Randy Whitman, that's how they got Reggie Theus. They traded him. They traded him to Sacramento to get Reggie Theus. I mean, Randy Whitman was, a, was, a, was the shooting guard to the point guard to Doc Rivers. And Randy Williams was, what, only averaging like 10 points a game. I mean, Reggie Fields averaged 24 points per game the year, the previous year. So, hey, I, you know, you can see the logic there. Whatever, okay. <sighs> so, the next season, the 1988-1989 season, after that, that great Game 7 with Larry Bird and Dominique Wilkins, they went from 50 victories during the regular season to 52, but they didn't tell the whole story. Okay, the coach of the Atlanta Hawks, Mike Fratello, and Reggie Theus, they were like, like, they were as close as the Atlantic is to the Pacific. I mean, they were like this at each other's throats the entire season. They didn't like each other. Moses Malone didn't quite fit into that locker room. Okay, and the turmoil there. I mean, they, they went they went from. From uh, from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood or from uh, Mr. Fratello's neighborhood, where everybody was chummy and I mean that was one of the most fun locker rooms to go into. It went from that to a lot of tension, and it showed in the playoffs because in the first round of the playoffs they lost to an, an inferior, by far, Milwaukee Bucks team. All right, three games to two. I worked at the Atlanta Journal Constitution back then. After they lost that game five. There were like mug shots in the Land Journal Constitution of all the Hawks players, and the headline was something like, Who's to blame for this? Well, Reggie Theus ended up, they, they let him go. Yeah, through the expansion draft to the Orlando Magic. But uh, he wasn't the, I mean, it, I don't say what the cost was in the minute. But, but after that, the Hawks went, Neh. Not for a year, not for a couple of years. But for a long time. I mean, it took Lenny Wilkins to come here before they started, like, rising a little bit. I mean, they didn't win 50 more games after they won 52 that uh, 1988-89 season, the one that they blew it to the Milwaukee Bucks. They didn't win more than 50 games again until 1994. They won 57. And that, that was a year, midway through the season, that, that they traded Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. Okay, but well, they recovered a little bit. They still had Lenny Wilkins, and then they got D Dikembe Mutombo, and they got Steve Smith, and they still had the Mookie Blaylock thing. So by the end of the late 1990s, you know, they had back-to-back 51 -back seasons, but that team wasn't going anywhere because it was rather old. But it still stands. That, that streak in the 80s when they won three straight 50 or more games, and actually four, if you want to add the one where they brought in Reggie and Moses, and it was a, it was a bust. But anyway... So actually, they won 50 or more games four straight years. Well, I'm only concentrating on those first three because of this. The first three was when they had, you know, Dominique Wilkins, a future Hall of Famer, Doc Rivers, who still holds some records with the Hawks. They had uh, Kevin Willis, one of the most underrated uh, power forwards in the history of the game. Spud Webb. I mean, who didn't like Spud Webb? I mean, this guy was magic everywhere. But you know who else they had? They had Randy Whitman. They had Tree, William, Tree Rollins. I mean, they, they weren't the greatest scorers, but they were perfect for that team in the locker room. Here's where I'm going. Hawks right now. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, you got some obvious talent here. I mean, you, I mean, let's, let's just assume that DeAndre Hunter is going to be uh, healthy. Cam Reddish, oh my goodness. Did you see him, you know, when he came back from his injuries, you know, for most of the year and, and what he did in game six? The Eastern Conference Finals, you know, against the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, the guy was just showing his potential. I mean, we know we got you know, him, okay? Here, you know, Kevin Herter showed some great things. I mean, you got got some other nice pieces and, uh, uh, you know, just run down the, down the line. But, but, but here's my point. Here's my point. All right, there's all this thing out there. What what should they do with John Collins? Is he a max player? Is he this, that? All I know is I, I, that you can debate that, but we know that he is great in the locker room. Perfect fit for them in the locker room. All right. Lou Williams. I mean, Lou Williams was going to retire before last season, before he, before he got traded to the to the Hawks. You know, and Lou, Lou, Lou saved them against the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals in Game 4. Okay? That, that was after Trey got, was, got hurt in Game 3. Had this great Game 4. Okay? After that, just kind of petered out a little bit. Kind of showing his age. 
Um, I still think they might need to upgrade a point guard, but at the same time, Trey loves him. He loves him in the locker room. Glue player. Solomon Hill. I mean, every time he comes up, comes off the bench, and, he, and he's, like, he's, he's like, no, don't do it. Particularly with three point. But glue player, they love him. Okay. All, all I'm saying is this. All, all I'm saying is this. I mean, there's an old saying that sometimes history repeats itself. And, and just during the offseason here, Hawks management, Hawks ownership, Hawks fans tell this to remind Hawks ownership and Hawks management that uh, uh, Moses Malone, Reggie Theus. That's, that's all I'm saying. 